Always this messy, so whatever. Recently grabbed some Fuji Color 200 and decided to uh, push it a stop to 400. I gotta be honest, it's totally, uh, definitely just repackaged Kodak Gold, which is fine because even Kodak Gold you can't find anywhere in stock these days. So I was shooting the Fuji Color 200, which is not Fuji C200. They're different films they just star they look different and oh well, yeah they look different so they're different films i was shooting it on my canon eos 650 which i for a film camera i am absolutely in love with i picked it up for about 15 bucks after having tons of hands-on experience with it i've run superior through it i run um ektar and i've also run well, Fuji Color 200, tons of Fuji Color. I run through it, and it's got a reliable meter, uh, fast enough autofocus, not the best autofocus in the world. Um, and man, this is just this camera, sexy, for real. The most direct comparison that I can make: a Ferrari Testarossa. Anyway, love this camera. More videos coming up. Video specifically about this absolute beast of a beauty. Oh. I've got plenty of B-roll. I've got like almost 30 stills. A bunch of these were throwaway. I'm not developing myself, but some of these shots, I did scan myself. And I noticed that my scans uh, using Negative Lab Pro um, were noticeably better than the lab scans. And I went for the high resolution TIFFs from the lab. I was able to retain tons of sky and when it came to shooting in like Ektar 100, there were so much more detail in the sky that I got from scanning the film myself. So I biked over to Prospect Park, went in on the Lincoln Avenue entrance as I usually do. I go there all the time for exercise, walking my daughter. So I went up Park Drive with my, uh, with my bike. I rolled up to the carousel. Um, they have parties and events here and stuff, and apparently you can rent it. So the sun was just starting to set. It wasn't quite golden hour. Um, it was a little too early for that, but that's just the time I had. And I wanted to kind of get someone right here by the light pole as, as they were going. And I wish there was a little bit more golden uh, sunlight coming in from the left. But, you know, you, you shoot what you see, not what you kind of wish you did, I guess. I had my bike in tow, so getting... One of the issues became the amount of light and the stability of... Uh, my camera and the shutter speed. I was shooting a 51.4. I had the 28 2.8 uh, with me as well when I went back to do the video portion of it. The video I filmed with the Sigma FP and the Zeiss 35 F2 M mount lens. So the idea was to kind of have a leading line on that left side and then uh, and then frame the people that were that were jogging and cycling on the the park drive and just kind of have the leaves and, and stuff. Um, just kind of framing it, essentially. This is totally a throwaway shot, not successful. Um, it's also a little bit out of focus. Film being as expensive as it is these days, not just to buy, but then also to develop and scan. I, just, I guess that's just part of shooting film. Film meant it's just, it's gonna get priced out of existence. I feel like when I do the scans myself, you can actually just get a much more faithful, almost a digital looking photo uh, as compared to this, because I, lab scans kind of have their own look, depending on what scanner they use. And then home scanning also. So these Fuji blues, as I keep saying them, what I mean is the greens, they're like bluish greens. The, the greens go pastel, bluish uh, tone in most of Fuji's film stocks. 
which I honestly love and I'm always trying to emulate with my uh, edited digital photos. All right. Uh, so I just kept on walking up. I realized now the light's starting to get gold and it's coming through the trees. So I wanted a little bit of directional light on this one. Got a little bit of a uh, leading line towards the edge there. It's offset a little bit to the left. I had a few people walking through. This one was, this one I scanned myself. Um, and uh, it's done with the Lumix S1. The people are blurry because uh, the shutter speed had to be pretty low. I did expose for the shadows and the trees straight up ahead. And I think it worked out. It's not a very strong composition, but I like the colors. I noticed that there's pretty good retention in the highlights because I scanned it myself compared to the lab scan that I got. That's a whole different video. So this one, um, I went ahead and put this tree dead center. There were really good light, light rays coming through the back. It's totally backlit. And there's there was a lot of uh, like mist in the air. This was a, a few hours after uh, a rainstorm. And uh, it wasn't wet, but it was pretty muggy and pretty warm. So I got the crap bit out of me by mosquitoes, like pretty bad. It was horrible. Um, this one, I just took another step up and tried to move the actual the tree to the left of the frame and try to get the sun kind of peeking through the back and kind of get those little, the, the sun to make like the, the little star shape. And I guess it's okay. There's someone in the background, which I kind of wanted. And then there's that mist kind of pouring through the middle. Not a really good landscape shot. I'm not a landscape photographer. Uh, this one was similar. I was trying to get the sun to kind of make like the sun star uh, through the trees. It didn't work out. There was too much mist. It was diffused a little bit. And what I saw in this case is not at all what it, the film captured. Total throwaway shot. So this is uh, the Vale of Cashmere, kind of walked up there. Um, and it's usually pretty empty. Sometimes people like to hang on the benches and there's bird watchers and stuff there. And it's just a relaxing place. You can't hear too much of the noise around you. Yeah, I, I do like the shot. I like the tree cutting across the frame. I do like the light. Um, and I think I, I got the exposure pretty well. I wish there was a little bit of the gold that I was seeing that came through, but it didn't in this case. And that's fine. This one, I really do like because I kind of put in a foreground element, that little marble post or that marble, whatever that is. I put that foreground element in there because otherwise it would have just been all green with a little spa uh, splash of red. It was like the only uh, contrasting color in the entire scene. So here's a comparison with my Sigma FP with the 35 F2 Zeiss lens. There's a lot more attention in the highlights because, you know, you can shoot uh, for the highlights and then bring the shadows up, which is what I did in post. Now, in terms of color, it's not as faithful, and I did edit it because I like to emulate those bluish greens that Fuji tends to have. Uh, yes, so this is a shot I'm really happy with. These are the stairs that I, ended, that I take up back to the drive and get on my bike and keep going get my lap in around the whole park and head home and try to make a quick trip I, I love the way the trees kind of curl up across the top it really does frame that stair set i wish there was a, a person walking either like towards it, towards the foreground or right up towards the middle and the left this is just uh, a picture that i'm really happy with I, it's missing a few things but if they were there this would be something i would actually get prints made of for myself, not to sell. It's not that good. I don't hate this one. I usually hate every picture I take. Um, there's pretty good retention in the highlights. I exposed right there for the trees, right around the area that you start seeing that golden light kind of hit the top. 
and there's a, yeah the sky is there i like the way the light cuts across the frame diagonally i like the people kind of walking through they're almost stacked into another diagonal so there's some pretty good geometric patterns happening with the light and the way the lawn the 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 kind of rolling lawn uh works here's a crop of it pretty good detail not too much chroma noise they are of course scans and jpegs and they're not good resolution or huge so you know you get digital issues with analog uh of an from an analog origin and this one's a one i took with the sigma fp this was the following day when i went to go shoot the video and took my 28 millimeter lens as well and just got a couple of stills that way It's not the same amount of light or the same uh, light temperature. Uh, much more resolution, clarity, uh, detail. Uh, here's another one. This is the FP again. There was some huge yoga event on the lawn. It was interesting. I um, stopped there for a few seconds. Here we've got um, on the back side of the park. Um, pretty happy with the highlight retention, even for having pushed the film a stop. And there's plenty of like detail in the shadows. This is a scan I did myself and I noticed compared to the lab scan, uh, the lab scan blew the sky completely. Uh, here's a crop of it because I, I scanned it pretty high resolution. I used a uh, pixel shift on the S1 and then there was a bunch of cropping to actually get to the negative and then convert it. Here's a comparison with the FP. It's on a different day, same spot, a um, little bit later on in the day, but the FP's low light is just, you know, compared to film. Compared to pushing a 200 speed film one stop, you know, the FP is incredible. Definitely looks more digital. Ah, uh, yes, this guy having the best time ever in his hammock. I was trying to do like a thirds and kind of frame people using the trees and that uh, little sit seating, uh, sitting area. I don't know if it works. This one I really do like because it kind of creates two frames and there's two different um, uh, social groups or families or whatever. Uh, parents and their kids, I guess. You can see that there's blue sky. This is a lap scan, but you can also see that the blacks are a bit crushed and they're flat, which in this case works because it's backlit and it's using like um, frames within the frame. So I don't hate it. You know, just another shot of the swan so you can kind of see that exposure latitude a little bit more. This was, I believe, the final shot I took that day. Um, just a leading line on that edge and the people kind of over off to the side. You can see that there's detail in the trees. You can see the blacks going, getting crushed and going pretty flat. And, but you, you still got highlights. You've got a little bit of golden light to the right, but all of this uh, Fuji 200, AKA Kodak Gold, has kind of a yellowish um, gold <laughs> color balance. I mean, which the lab corrects for anyway, and I had to correct for it when I was scanning it myself. Yeah, this this is uh, just an excuse for me to practice and getting back into film, which I, I used to shoot when I was younger, up into my early 20s, until like people would make fun of you for still shooting film. And, you know, digital wasn't even exciting. Now film is being rediscovered by a bunch of people and they love it. And I've got a freezer full of film. A bunch of it has expired and I'm shooting it again. I'm having a great time, especially with the home scans. Hopefully I, you know, it doesn't become just absolutely unaffordable to keep shooting film. I guess I gotta get moving on the next video. Road trip video, I believe, is coming up next. I hope.